Now, when I say this, it's just like, it's just real. Like, it's, I'm just me being honest, but it didn't even seem like that was reachable to me. I never thought that none of us could get to that point because nobody ever did. So I was listening to the local artists because I'm seeing them, this dude rapping about it, and I'm seeing them driving it. So that's inspiration to me. My greatest asset is God because somebody could take my same exact steps and it won't happen like how it happened for me. I've seen people take my exact steps with the game and then the music and it didn't happen for them. Yeah, my guy. What up, though? What up, though? What up, though, man? Ain't been good. How you, man? Man, good, good. Bless. T. Grizzly, what's good, my brother? What's going on, man? What do you do? What's the deal? Yeah, man. Thank you for joining us. Man, I appreciate y'all having me, though. For real. Yeah, yeah. And we've been trying to link for a while, so I'm glad we got a chance to do this right before your project is about to come out. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot to talk about on the business side, the gaming side, but I want to start with the music because, mm -hmm. um, it's an interesting story. Actually, how we got introduced to your music, we was in LA. I don't even know if you remember this. We was in LA at a party and they played the song 30 times in a row. I thought you was from LA. Cause the way that they was playing it, I'm like, oh, he gotta be like a local LA artist. Like he's from Compton or something. Yeah. And the lyrics was just so like hard. I'm like, yo, who is this kid? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like literally they played the song 30 times in a row. And then when we got back home, it just started to blow up. Like, when you was recording that that song, mm -hmm. first day out, did you know, like, the impact it was gonna have? And not even just on, like, being a big song, but we go to Detroit a lot, and they were saying, like, that even ushered in a new wave of the Detroit wave that's out now. Like, they, a lot of the guys credited you for that. Mm -hmm. Did you know when you was recording that song that like, that's gonna be one of them ones that just lived throughout hip hop history? Nah. I ain't, it's, I always had a passion for rapping, you know what I'm saying, for music, but I never thought or I never saw myself being a part of hip hop history in that type of way, having that much of an impact. You know, I never thought I'd be the one to open the door for like a whole new era in the city. You feel me? It was all a surprise to me. Yeah, it's crazy because that song has success, but I'll never forget, uh, Jay Z's going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. and he never tweets, right? But mm -hmm. he starts tweeting out all the people he thinks. And his last tweet is, "The tweet girls he got the hardest shit out." Yeah. Like when you saw that, coming from a guy like that and everything he means to the culture, what what did that feel like for you? I had to go make sure it was real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had to go do some double shaking because I I never heard of him having no Twitter. Yeah. And then when I saw the name, it was like SC. I'm like, what the, you know? Yeah. I'm like, this really him? And they were like, no, that's really his page. Like, that's really him. You know, and that, that just felt good. That felt good. Jay-Z was like my pop's favorite rapper too. And my pop's passed, so that meant a lot, you know? That's crazy. Yeah, how's it to put, you know, like I said, Detroit back on the map? Detroit was always on the map, but, you know, y'all got a whole new wave going. Mm -hmm. Like, how is it to be a, a representative of Detroit, a city with, you know, such a rich history? Yeah, it, I mean, it, it feels great and it feels so meaningful because what I'm doing, I'm kind of shedding the light on the other side of Detroit because we, we, we had a lot of people that came out that was just like lyrical geniuses, you feel me? And it was just super intelligent with how they rap and they had a lot of substance and stuff like that. But I'm giving them like the streets and they I don't think that's something that they ever had at that level before. You know, so for all the other artists that that's on that same type of time, there's just a platform for them now. Yeah, it's interesting. You, you I wonder as a kid, you said your dad, that kind of made me feel a little old. You said your dad, mm -hmm. his favorite rapper was Jay-Z. So who would have influenced in rap for you to say that this is what I want to do, right? Because from your city, obviously, M, everybody knows M and Sean, but those are different type of MCs. You, like you said, you got like more of the streets. Mm -hmm. type of element into you. So who who's influenced you at an early age? Yeah. So my, my, my pops wasn't that old. He just liked Jay-Z. <laughs> okay, okay. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. But um, the influences for me, so now when I say this, it's just like, it's just real. Like, it's, I'm just me being honest. Yeah. It was other Detroit artists that was talking about some street shit. And I'm going to tell you why, because other artists, it didn't even seem like that was reachable to me. 
You know what I'm saying? I never thought that none of us could get to that point because nobody ever did. So I was listening to the local artists because I'm seeing them, this dude rapping about it and I'm seeing them driving it <laughs> and I'm seeing it happen. So that's inspiration to me, mm -hmm. you know? I never really been to a concert or seen like major rappers. So that was just like, whenever I'm watching BET or at home, watching some rap videos, they come on. Yeah, you know? it's cause we, we've been there, like you said, a few times and every time I see a bill, it's a lot of just Detroit artists. So that makes perfect sense. But the music game is a business as well, right? So the other part of music is the business. When did you start realizing that this is a business and this is something that I can make money off of? I ain't start I ain't start realizing that until I started seeing the Jay Z tweets, you know what I'm saying, the LeBron listening to it, and like people calling for shows all across the nation, and it's like that's when I started realizing, okay, it's real. Yeah. So that set it yeah. off. People that that tweet set off the momentum. Say, who is this guy? We need to find him. We need I, to book him. I don't think it set up the momentum. Mm. I think what it did is it just let me know, like, all right, it's serious. This is bigger than what I thought. Were you on the label when you came out with the song? No. It was independent? Mm-hmm. So at what point do you start to get educated? Like, who helps educate you on, you know, this is, this is how it works. You got to get a manager. We're going to go on the road. We're going to talk to labels. Mm -hmm. Like, because you're coming from a city where it's not like New York or Atlanta where the labels are already there. Exactly. So who educated you on that? Nobody. It was like, had to learn from experience. You know, it was me and my auntie, and we just learning as we go. Mm. You feel me? Because like I said, I, it was never nobody from the scene, from the industry that we could just call or that we had connections with. You feel me? So, so how'd you push that record though? Because like I said, like <clears throat> we heard it in LA, mm -hmm. so it, it was it was it was getting pushed. How, what's, how did you, as an independent artist, make that record, and, and how how did it get to be such a big record? I'm gonna keep it a buck. I ain't. I didn't do nothing, bro. I had 2,500 followers when that, I first when that came out. Yeah, when I first dropped it, and it just started going organically. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The DJs, I, just the local DJs, just start playing. Yeah, because I feel like the streets was rocking with it so heavy that the DJs was like, "We gonna play with the streets rocking with." You feel me? And it's just because of the authenticity of the music. It's real. You know what I'm saying? People feel it differently. It ain't me just on there trying to sound sweet or be swaggy. I'm just giving them real life and they just touched them, you know? I like that. When I hear it, that truth, it reminds me when I used to listen to Beanie Siegel. Mm -hmm. And I felt like there was that real truth bars inside there. So I, I, as you're figuring this thing out, right, I, what's the process now when I got to book shows and I got to sign deals? Is it is you and your auntie just walking into these meetings? Yeah. Yeah, literally, that's it. That's it. We eventually um, end up meeting with 300 Celine from 300, and um, I just liked that they vibe and they energy. And once we went with them and got with them and got the ball rolling, just been clicking. Yeah, up every sense for real. So you're doing the music, and you're still relatively new in your career, right? Like, it's not like you've been doing music for like 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. You start pivoting into into gaming, mm -hmm. which is why we're in this this environment that we're in now. Yeah, where does that come from? You always was a gamer. Always. So, Before I fell in love with music, I was in love with playing the game. Right. What's your favorite game? Let's do this. It, it depends, cause I had different, I had different eras in my life with the game and stuff. Like if you want to go back, back, then you got the 007 Golden Eye Days. Okay. On the Nintendo 64, and then you got the Spyros, the Twisted Metals, the Tony Hawks. You know, then the Grand Theft, the first Grand Theft Auto. When the screen was like from the top. Yeah, yeah, the aerial screen. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I just was always in the game. So you never was like playing uh, Madden or NBA 2K or NBA Live? Or I play, I play, um, I play, I don't know if you know about it, it's called Ballers. Yeah, yeah. That was like the street ball street thing? Ball. Street yeah, ball, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. get a house car chain on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you feel me? I was playing Ballers. <laughs> I was playing uh, NBA Street, NFL Street. You feel me? Oh, you're a real gamer, man. Yeah, so, I played Blitz football. Okay. So I was good like at Blitz. The alternative. Yeah, that's the not arcade. Like the regular, you yeah, know, the street ball. Yeah, I, I grew up on that. So when you said Golden, I'm like, ah, right, now this guy's a real gamer. I grew up on that. Yeah. Um, I actually was a gamer, man. So it's interesting to hear your story because around the early 2000s is when GTA 3 comes out. 
but it happens right, right when online gaming comes out. Mm -hmm. So we grew up in an era where you had to go to your man's house to play him, yeah. to see who's really nice, and hopefully somebody go home to mad, or mm -hmm. we're not leaving until we, I win. Yeah. I remember but, them days, bring your extra controller. Yeah, bring your extra controller so we could play. Yeah. But online gaming changes it. And so talk about that, from that point where you're now playing online to figuring out, all right, well, this is something that people are making money off of. Mm -hmm. So when it first came out, or when, when people was like initially heavy on the online gaming, I wasn't, I was, I was outside so much because I'm at this point where like, all right, bet. I'm getting ready to get out of school, you know, and ain't nobody gonna make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do no more. Like once you graduate high school, ain't, ain't nobody, it's all on you after that. Mm -hmm. So I was always trying to figure out what I'm about to do when I leave here. And I kind of got away from it for a long time, like the game and stuff like that. So I didn't get to experience the first online gaming experience. The first wave. Yeah, the first wave, for yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 I, I, the, the, the interesting thing is, is like a little known fact, but say they started doing the Madden tournaments and mm -hmm. that was the first time people were getting paid. And then they had the NBA Live tournaments. I got actually got invited on the bus. I was that good. Yeah. I didn't, I chose to teach instead of playing video games. Yeah. And so then I, I think they started having online games inside of Call of Duties and now people are getting paid. And so you're starting to watch kids now play, but in Call of Duty, those battle sports, you know, the, the, the war games and the, the first person shooters, that starts to happen. Tournaments start to happen. Are you now, when you start seeing that, is it like, I need to get back into this because there's tournaments that are paying? Well, what what is the thing that sparks it? Like, I need to get back into it. It's so crazy because I was never, I was never seeing that. Hmm. Like, I was never seeing that. What made me get on it though, like when COVID had hit. Oh, 2020. Okay. When COVID had hit, I had, when the bought a system, when I'm about to be in here, I can't just, I didn't watch Game of Thrones the whole day. <laughs> you feel me? I gotta, I need something. Yeah. You know? And everybody in the crib, so I know about online gaming at this point, so I'm like, all right, bet, we can just run Call of Duty. And as I'm playing, I'm just meeting people online, and, you know, they not even believing it's me. You feel me? And they say your voice. Yeah. <laughs> and then I ran into a couple people that are like, bro, you should stream. You feel me? Like, you should stream this. Like, people are really rock with you. You feel me? I didn't know what he was talking about. I'm like, how do you stream? Like, what is the streaming? And I had somebody just come to the crib and he was like, I'm gonna set everything up for you. All you gotta do is click this button. When you click this button, you laugh, so be careful. Whenever you click this button, just watch what you say from this point on. You know, and I started messing with it, started going live, and people started rocking with it. Eventually, I ended up getting into GTA from Call of Duty. Yeah, it's been crazy. So my son is a gamer, and um, he's heavily in the games. And I'm from an era where I never really played video games like that, but I did play, but I didn't, I never, it wasn't streaming. When we was playing video games, we were just playing against e each other. Me too. So it's still hard for me to fully understand streaming, but I see mm -hmm. like how and I see how it's moving, Twitch and everything. But people like me who's not in the world, mm -hmm. can you explain streaming culture mm -hmm. and why? Like, I don't understand why people watch somebody play a video game, but mm -hmm. I understand that there's a culture behind it. So can you explain like the whole streaming culture? Yeah. So, I mean, well, I don't know because it's like I went from the old way straight to the new way. So like I said, I put the game down for a minute and then picked it up right in the middle of the streaming thing. So I really like can tell you more about you gotta leave your game on. If you ain't got no memory card, you got to start all the way over. <laughs> you feel me? That's really like my expertise. But with the streaming today, what I learned is basically like, if you got the phone flipped on you and you just press record and a bunch of people can watch you and comment and subscribe to you and you just build a community, I feel like that's, that's the main thing that I get from it. So they're getting to interact with you on a personal level, kind of, yeah, while you're playing video games. And exactly. while you're playing video games, you might be talking about rap, you might be talking about fashion, a variety mm -hmm. of other things. It's like going live on Instagram for you. Yeah, much. yeah, it's like it's like going live on Instagram, but ga the gaming thing different though. <laughs> yeah. Because when you, when I'm, if I'm live on Instagram, I'm still an artist. Yeah. I still gotta be cool, you feel me? When I'm on a game, I'm disconnected from everything. So you're, you're yeah. walking around as your avatar, y'all going through maps, y'all jacking cars, mm -hmm. y'all going on missions. 
and people are watching that. Mm -hmm. But some people are actually in the world with you, mm -hmm. like going through these things. Yeah, for sure. So like, wh what do you think it was about you that attracted people to say, I, I need to be a part of that world. They got something going on over there. Yeah, because I try to play, I try to stream a lot of different games. And a lot of one for me, and then when I finally got on GTA, it's like, damn, this is like our culture. This is for me. I can play this role perfectly. <laughs> Jack and cars. You feel me? We, so we, we robbing. Exactly. We so robbing. I'm, a lot of dudes who was like actually in the streets, you know, I'm telling them to get on the game. Like it's a lot of dudes from Jersey, from the South, like everywhere that was really in the streets that's on the game now. And it's so fun and interesting and exciting to watch because instead of really doing it in real life, people doing it out here. You know what I'm saying? And it's just way better. It's essentially like watching sports. Like you watching somebody play and they're like living vicariously through you as you're actually playing the game. Yeah, yeah. How, how, how do you make money from this? So the way the way to make money, you got you gotta know how to repurpose things. You know, so you you start off with the with the whatever streaming platform you wanna stream off of. You, you, what do you stream on? Twitch? Yeah, Twitch. Okay. Yeah. So Twitch, boom, you got subscribers. You got ads, you got people that can donate to you. And the sky's the limit with all that stuff. You feel me? But your videos saved though. So you could take those videos and repurpose them. You can make content out of them on your TikTok, your Instagram. YouTube. Like you, YouTube, you get a bag off Snapchat. You feel me? Just repurposing your your content for real. So, so your man tells you, the story is, or the legend is that your man tells you you can make like $5,000 a month if you do this right. Yeah, that's when I was playing Call of Duty. When you're playing Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that quickly turned to something that you didn't, you were like, wait, we're gonna make way more than that. What? <laughs> so talk about when you first get into it, it's like, all right, we can make a couple thousand until like, nah, we're making almost hundreds of thousands in yeah, a month. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy because I had blew him off for like two months because when I think of GTA, I'm thinking like, I beat the game and then it's boring. Yeah. You feel me? But he like, no, this is something totally different. So I ended up giving it a try. And yeah, that's how he got me on. He like, I can make you extra five thousand a month or whatever. I'm like, man, I'm stuck in the house. But come on, let's do it. You feel me? <laughs> Boom. And then like, I'm seeing little clips go viral, and I'm seeing like my subscriptions go from thirty five hundred to like fifteen thousand people subscribe. I'm like, nah, this this gonna be way more than five thousand or what? <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. talk about how that how a clip goes viral because, like you said, it's it's tough for people who don't play mm -hmm. to understand <clears throat> how a video game that you played and people watched now goes viral again. So, yeah. what was it? Was it like a mission that you was going on, or y'all went to go jump somebody, or y'all y'all ganged up and y'all fighting another game across town on on the map? Yeah. So I, I wasn't even trying to go, I wasn't even trying to go viral. Like when you, the best way to have success on there is truly to just like be yourself, be your true personality. Don't try to be too cool to talk to the people or joke around or be goofy or nothing like that. You gotta be yourself. Because at the end of the day, nobody really care about what you do or what your skill level is. They just wanna be entertained, they wanna laugh. So I'm just on there being myself, you know? And the clips that be going viral just be like, Funny shit that we just end up doing. Like, I got scammed by the African dude. <laughs> you right, feel me? Right, I had right. to sing Michael Jackson to get out of jail. You feel <laughs> me? That just that type of shit. So how often do you have do you stream? Um, not as often as I would like to because it, it's like I got two jobs now. <laughs> you know, with the music and the game, and I, of course, got to balance out real life with family. So whenever I can, I definitely try to for sure. But it's not like a Set schedule. How how uh, how important or what impact does the actual music have on your growth of your subscribers? Right, like I can imagine listening to a record and like you're actually doing something that you said in the song mm -hmm. while you are playing the game. No facts, facts, <laughs> facts. It's so it's so crazy because I don't know if music have a huge impact mm -hmm. on it because there's a lot of fans that I that I got from gaming that don't even know I rap. And I still got a lot of music fans who don't know how to play game. You right. feel me? So it's like, it's like two, literally like two cars. So you mm -hmm. essentially just built yourself as one of the top gamers organically. 
It yeah, wasn't right. like just off of the music, follow me on Twitch. Exactly. No, you, really, you really embedded it with the culture. Yeah, for sure. Because I didn't even want to promote on my socials that I'm on here playing the game. Wow. Because I wanted to be, I didn't want it to be like the music fans. I wanted this to be a genuine community that I built, you know. But like I said, with clips and stuff just going, then everybody eventually find out. But mm -hmm. I just wanted to build a gaming community, though. How much money can you make doing this? You can make millions. Doing millions it. of dollars? You can make millions doing it. I've made millions from doing it. And and this is from people that's paying to watch you from? This is from people paying to watch and you repurposing your content. What's more lucrative for you right now, music or gaming? Music. Music? Yeah, music. Yeah. So you're always going to keep that as the main thing? Yeah, Music sure. is still the number one thing? Yeah, for sure. And game is number two? Yeah. How, how do you go about it? It's like a baseball contract and a basketball it's contract. Like Dion. <laughs> like Dion. <laughs> <laughs> Be real prime time. Yeah, yeah. yeah Legend yeah. in two games. That's a fact. Yeah. So how do you go about, and at what point do people come to say, like, we want to uh, advertise with you, we want to sign you, mm -hmm. we want to put, you know, pieces of content on some of the videos? At what point does that come? Is that early on? Um, It was kind of, it was kind of early. It was kind of early. I think it's still early because like, the people I talk to that be doing this game and stuff, they've been doing this for like nine years. Yeah. Like streaming and like having a PC and set up. I just found out about a PC like 2021, you know? So I think it's still early. So I would say, yeah. So you're, you're officially, I mean, you're an esports person mm -hmm. in a sense. Have brands come to you, like the esports gaming community, to have yeah. you join them yeah. and be part of them? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because like, we, um, we saw FaZe Clan, but... No, I like Exit. Yeah, I'm with Exit. Okay. Yeah. So they, they approach you with a deal. They watch what you're doing in streaming. Mm -hmm. What is that like? Um, I mean, it's dope because they've been in it for so long and they so way more knowledgeable than me in the space. So they going It's easy for them to bring opportunities. You know what I'm saying? And as long as I'm doing my part, and by them already having a roller decks, it's just like, you just keep doing your part and we just get on center. So in a sense, it's almost like a label. Kind of, yeah. Like you signed to a label in this space and yeah. now they can bring opportunities to you. Yeah. Has other rappers approached you like trying to get into gaming and want to like you to help them navigate that? Yeah, but see like a lot of rappers that come around and they just do it wrong. Just for the money? Yeah. Yeah. I understand you doing it for the money. Like I get that. But you gotta know how to do it. You could do it. You your reason can be your reason, but as long as you know how to do it, you good. So what mistake, what mistakes are, are they making? When you come on there, you 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 trying to be too cool. Mm. You steal the rapper. You got the sunglasses on. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> this ain't this ain't after the show. <laughs> you feel me? Like kick it with the people and just like be yourself and let people find out who the person is. <laughs> Well, that's intimate. Let me follow up. Yeah, so there's, yeah, so there's yeah. two different things. Yeah. All right, so in the rapper world, you got to be super rapper. You got to have your chains. You got to have your, your sunglasses. You got to, like, you know, be in that vibe of a cool person. Then the gaming community is a whole different community, right? It's a lot more relaxed, fun, free going. So yeah, I, I feel like in the rapper world, you just got to be, like, alert, careful, you know? Like, if people, if, if they see, I'll give you an example. If they see me out somewhere, nine times out of ten, I'm trying to do what I need to do and get back. Or I'm trying to do the show and then I'm getting up out of there. I ain't really got time to really kick it. Well, let me ask you this, because Fat Joe said something to us that was very interesting. We was with Joe, shout out to Joe. And he was saying that, he's like, most rappers are like introverted. Mm -hmm. He's like, we don't like to talk to people. We don't like, very non-social. Mm -hmm. That's not beneficial in the gaming world where you have to be exactly social, right? exactly that's like i say i don't really got time to kick it but when i'm sitting there for hours we can talk about anything you know we can really kick it i'm sitting down i'm at i'm gaming right now so how do you balance how do you go in between those two worlds um i think for me i'm just like the same person all the time so it's not really difficult for me you know but the introvert thing i feel them on that but I feel like people make us introverts because we got like so many people trying to talk to us at one time and it just be like, I just don't even feel like talking. Like <laughs> Everybody wants something. You feel me? Like I literally don't even feel like talking. <laughs> It'd be days where I just want to be quiet the whole day because I didn't talk so much. 
You feel me? That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it makes perfect sense that that constant pressure of somebody wanting something from you, somebody needing something from you. I feel like the, the gaming almost could be a relief where it's, I could just really disconnect just from the world. Connect, dis yeah. Disconnect, but still be connected in a sense where yeah. people actually get to have dialogue, they get to see your real personality, yeah. some of the things that you like while yeah. having fun, because it's still fun. It's, 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 so, it's, it's, it's like therapy for me, because it's like, you just really truly disconnect from the world, Lord. Don't nothing matter but this right now. This is a fast financial fact sponsored by Xfinity. This week's fact. Setting clear and specific financial goals can help you stay motivated and focused on your financial journey. When setting a goal, be sure to take into account the following. Make sure your goal is realistic and attainable based on past performance and market conditions. A clear timeline should be outlined for the next fiscal year, providing a clear deadline for achieving the goal. Assets Over Liabilities is presented by Xfinity. So how many subscribers do you have presently? Presently, and mind you, like I haven't been on there consistently, none really this year, but I still got like 7,000 subs. 7,000 subs. Yeah. Now in order, so I, I was, I, now, if, now, now everybody can't do the same thing though. Like okay. if you own it, you have to be consistent. Because like if, if somebody else was to take a week off, you would literally lose all your subs. I just built a loyal community that's just gonna stay there because they know I'm coming back. Yeah. At the peak, how many? At the peak, like 20,000. 20,000. And so some of those people, because I, I, I did the research on how I could play <clears throat> in your in your module, right? So first mm -hmm. I gotta download it, then mm -hmm. I gotta download GTA, mm -hmm. and then I gotta, I have, there's like a waiting line. Like only 90 people or something like that can be in there? Yeah, we, we upped it to 250 recently. <laughs> so all, at the, when it starts, only 90 people can get in. Then I was up to 250. So mm -hmm. like, if I'm that 251st person, I gotta wait to, to even be in your world. How does that work? Yeah, so it's a queue. Like the server is always full, but we got hundreds of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people that's part of the community. So it's like, you gotta get in the line and just leave your, leave your PC on. And if somebody, it's if somebody dies or somebody turns off their PC, now a new person. Now you get, it. yeah, not a line. Whoever was next in line get to go. Now here's the important part. So those people that are in the world, they're paying a fee to be in the world, yeah? Yeah, because some people pay to like skip the line. Because uh, you would be like 75th. And that might be like nine hours. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? So people pay to so skip the line. So now we at the club again. That's what I was talking about. That's, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. So, how you feel about the metaverse? The metaverse, um, I feel like what I do is the metaverse. I was going, that's why I was going with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that is the metaverse. I feel like that's the metaverse that we've been waiting on. So, it's fun. I, I'm glad you answered that because I feel like people don't fully understand. Like my son, he plays Roblox and I'm always giving him money. We were just talking about Roblox. Yeah, we, I'm always giving him money to, to spend in this game and then I'm telling him like, yo, you know this isn't like actual real life, but to him it is, it is real life. So. That's already metaverse, right? I mm -hmm. think people have like a false perception of like metaverse is just gonna be like some matrix, but we're technically already in, yeah, in yeah. the meta and it, it's only gonna get bigger and bigger. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. G I, I, I've always said that GTA is the metaverse. Yeah. Like Roblox is cool, but GTA, there's cars, there's women, mm -hmm. there's clubs, there's money, there's games. It's everything <laughs> that's yeah. in the real world. You never have to get off. Yeah, you never. <laughs> You feel me? Like, you really, literally never have to get off. And there's some people who never get off. <laughs> you know? There's some people we'd have to tell, man, look, go outside. <laughs> Just yeah. go outside. Wait, so we got to get back to the, so to cut the line, well, to pay to get, how, how do you create a price system or a price point to decide, all right, this is how much we're going to charge for y'all to cut the line, mm -hmm. right? Because it can fluctuate, right? Yeah, it can fluctuate for sure. It's like, it's some people that charge like $1,000 to cut the line. You really? feel me? But see, like me, being from where I'm from, I know it's more people with $50 than it is with $1,000. So I'm, I'd probably charge you like $50 or the max we would go is like 300. We ain't never going to 1,000. No. You feel me? Because it's younger people too. Yeah. They ain't got a, they ain't got a thousand to just spend on this. So from like 50 to like 300. What's the future for you in gaming? Do you ever think about start creating your own game? You want to have your own gaming league? Like, what's your aspirations in, in gaming? I would love to have a, a, a gaming league. I would love to have my own game that's like 
partnered with Rockstar, you know, and I don't know. I don't know, man. I just want to. I just want to see a lot of more, a lot more people doing it because it's a good way to disconnect. It's a good way to like, like therapeutic. I was gonna ask you from a mental health standpoint, it, it can go either way, right? So, like you said, sometimes you got to tell people to get off the game because you can kind of just do that all day, and that's mm-hmm. not healthy. But it also can help you disconnect and be like kind of therapy, right? So, talk about that. Like coming from environments, you're going through a lot of adversity. Mm-hmm. Um, how has game helped you mentally, mental health? It helped me mentally because it's like, you know how some people meditate to calm down. When I say it's like therapy, that's it like kind of calm me down a little bit, you know? And when like, whenever I'm going through something, if I'm on there, it's literally like don't nothing else matter but what's going on in the game. That's my only objective is to do what I need to do on there and to just have that peace for that minute yeah. and not worry about what I really got to get off here and deal with. It's just make you go about things way better. Like once I get off, I can handle things way better. You, you brought up um, Rockstar. Mm-hmm. That's that's interesting because I want, have they reached out to you? Yeah. yeah. But they reached out to me on some, hey, <laughs> you know. We need a piece. Take that McDonald's out of there. Yeah, <laughs> so there's a couple of things. You, you, and I'm glad you brought that up, Sean. You was talking about the metaverse because even in our notes, it was like, oh, he owns a Dunkin' Donuts. Nah. He doesn't yeah. own a physical location. You own it inside of <laughs> the game. Mm-hmm. So I'm about getting real K- KFC too, right? Yeah. yeah. Vir- virtual. Virtual, yeah. You own a Dunkin' Donuts and a KFC virtually. Yeah. Okay. What's the benefit? What's the, what's the deal with that? <laughs> so the benefit, I got real employees in there. You know, they making money. Um, they literally, like, got to work it like a real job. And they own it every day. Don't miss it. Grand Theft Auto. Mm-hmm. So people buy food in there? People got to go buy food in there. They got to buy the food. Because you got to eat. You will starve to, to that. <laughs> yeah. So they got to buy the food. Got to buy food. Cost, and there's a percentage that goes to you. Mm-hmm. And then you pay the employees. Mm-hmm. So you're like a manager. Yeah. But you got all the franchise. Only, yeah, yeah, yeah. How much did it cost yeah. to buy the McDonald's? Um, I don't know. I think it was like at an auction or something like okay. that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the auction business is off and shit like and that. And it's profitable. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, that's the metaverse. That's what yeah, I'm saying. That, that is the metaverse. Saying. It's, it's yeah, the metaverse. Real. Yeah. And, and then in order to make the money, you got is it still you got to go on missions? Or are you just outside, like you somebody's walking out on the street doing them? Anything. Anything you want to do, you can do it. You ain't even got to. It ain't even missions no more. Wow. Like, the mission is whatever you create the mission to be. Your mission could be robbing my donut spot. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to hit a lick. Yeah. Oh, so if your donut stops get robbed, you actually take a loss. Like not real life, but yeah. Uh, okay, okay. But yeah, in there though. So I here's a big question, right? That was GTA and that was five. Mm-hmm. But we know it's coming around the corner. Yeah. GTA six. Are they have you seen previews of it? Are you already creating a business plan when that drops? Because I mm-hmm. feel like when that when that one hits, it's gonna be especially what's going on, this is gonna be something that's gonna shift. I, I say that because in when GTA 3, we talked about the aerial view. When mm-hmm. it went to the first person, you can see Tony mm-hmm. running through the streets. Mm-hmm. That changed everything. Like, for sure. I stopped, like I was in college, like I'm missing class for this. Yeah. What, what, are, you, what are you planning for, for the new one? Wow, that definitely changed everything for sure. <laughs> um, when GTA 6 dropped, I'm definitely gonna have to play GTA 6 and then it's Grizzly Road 2.0. You feel me? Back at it. Yeah, GTA 6 is gonna be for me, Grizzly Road 2.0. So music makes more money, but what are you more passionate about, gaming or music? Um, I'm more, I'm still more passionate about music, but I like the space, the mental space that I be in with gaming more, because with music, it's a lot more opinions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a lot more opinions, you know, and it kind of can confuse you as far as like, damn, what to do or what they want, you know? Mm-hmm. Versus gaming where you literally just do anything. Yeah, when, and, and more, more chefs in the kitchen, I would assume. Right? Yeah, You got the sure. label, you got the manager. Producer, producer. and all, you got to get samples yeah. cleared, it's the whole process. You got to chase people down for stuff, yeah. you know? And it's just, it's just become a difficult process, you feel me? But I'm still more passionate about it because I just love the feeling of when I when it, when a song come together for me. Yeah, I feel like the, the personality is, is interesting because I feel like 
very reserved guy. Not really an introvert, but very reserved. Mm -hmm. And we, we say this all the time, in order for us to leave our house, it has to be something worthwhile. Mm -hmm. So if I can make millions in my home, mm -hmm. I mean, this is perfect. Yeah, it has to be something very. Really, there's, there's something really special about music that's going to take you out the house. That's going to get you on the road. Mm -hmm. Are you ever? Do you carry the equipment on the road with you? I don't, but I need to. I want to start though. I want to start for sure. Because now it's when that's two times. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely for sure. I definitely want to start. So, how do you deal as far as you you're running two businesses, right? You got the gaming business. And then the music business, um, how does that look as far as like the help support system, like as far as employees and people that are like your manager and different things of that nature? Is it one set of people that you work with for music mm -hmm. and then another set of people that work with the gaming or everybody just kind of works together? It's kind of like a mixture. Like it's, it'll be one person that help with both. And then it'll be some just people who strictly just do gaming, just people who strictly do music. And then you got some few people who help with both, you know, I like a mixture. So we got money coming from both avenues, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's incredible. But one of the most important things that we see is being able to manage money, mm -hmm. being financially disciplined with the money. Mm -hmm. How's that process been for you as, as you're accumulating more money than you've seen in your life and now more people are calling you because they need you, mm -hmm. more family needs you. How's that, how's that been for you? Yeah, so I, I I done went through through the phase where I was like, I right, about to messed up a lot of money. I done went through that phase. I'm not trying to mess up no more money, right? <laughs> and then it was a phase where, what, well, it's like a bunch of people was just pulling and reaching for it, you know? And it's like, I had to learn it's healthy to say no. It's actually healthy. Healthier. For you, you feel me, to say no. So, yeah, the, the management part of it, money management, I've learned from experience, hard experiences, for sure. What, what you said you made some mistakes, what, what were some of the mistakes you made? Some of the mistakes I made was spending more than what I, what I was making. living beyond my means. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing, like living beyond my means, you know? And the second thing was not being able to say no to people. You feel me? Especially when they word it a certain way, like, can you do this for me? They were trying to put me on the street, I'm gonna have to sleep outside the gas station. <laughs> and it's like, damn. <laughs> it's up to me whether you sleep on the side <laughs> of the gas station or not. Damon John told us something damn. else, bro. He was like, oh, um, he was like, you know, he, he used to always give money to people. He used to always kind of like, yo, this is, it's dire, like life or death. And he was like, something miraculously happened. He stopped doing it and they still kept living. It wasn't as bad yeah. as we thought it was going to be. Yeah, like, yeah. When you figured out a way, it wasn't like you're the deciding factor. Man, that's what they make you feel like, though. Like, you was the deciding factor. Whether <laughs> life is hell. <laughs> this is like, damn. You know, um, so what's X set? Yeah. You know, with with ex-convicts that getting them involved in gaming? Um, I definitely got a lot of ex-convicts that's involved in gaming, for sure. But X set is like a, it's like an org. You know, it's an org of people who was a part of different orgs, but then started their own with the with the with, with what they feel like was missing from the other orgs. Hmm. When, when you're trying to talk to the, your, your homies like Yo, this is the way to get money, I wonder <laughs> what are those conversations like, right? Are mm -hmm. they like ah whatever, I ain't doing that? Mm -hmm. Nah, bro. Like, let me show you the, like, how we really doing this. Like, what what are those conversations like in the early stages when you're first trying to tell them? Look, we don't have to stay out here anymore. Like, we can go inside and play games. Yeah. No, it's crazy because they be wanting to do it. Mm. They be wanting to do it. It's either they want to do it and it look interesting, they get on there and have fun, or they don't plan on doing it at all, <laughs> and they just don't do it. You feel me? But most of the time, though, the guys be wanting to. Because yeah, it look fun. It's like the stuff that we really would do. And you got jobs for them. You feel me? Exactly. For sure. <laughs> So, do you think that this would become bigger in hip hop culture? I mean, as far as like people always play video games, but I mean, as far as like people really merging mm -hmm. the two worlds together of gaming and hip hop, maybe like a, a an event where it's like gaming, but then somebody performs. Like you know, you, you see that happening. Yeah, I feel like if artists allow themselves to just be themselves when it comes to the gaming platform, 
because we was all gamers before we was artists anyway. Mm -hmm. So if they just allow themselves to be themselves, then I feel like it'll be, a, it'll definitely be a bridge between the gap for sure. It's interesting, you got the real estate inside of, of GTA. Mm -hmm. When we go to Detroit, and even before we got there, everybody just kept telling us, you need to buy real estate in Detroit. Mm -hmm. there's, there's plenty of opportunities here, there's, there's room for growth. Are you interested or are you involved in real estate, physical real estate mm -hmm. in, in the city of Detroit? Um, I know that it's, it's, it's great real estate opportunities out there for sure. I'm not involved, you know, I just really don't got the time mm -hmm. to be super hands-on with it. Yeah, I, and when I take on a project, I really like to be like, I got a million questions. I want to be there every step of the way. I need to know what's going on. I just don't need, I don't want to worry myself with something else right now. Yeah, I, I asked because I heard the lyric. It said my, my credit score 800. Yeah. They can't discredit me no more. So yeah. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Most people don't even know their credit score. Yeah, no, facts, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Facts, facts. So like, even you saying it, people going like, oh wait, mm -hmm. really got 800? No, I got the app on my phone and everything. I've been on the, I've been on the credit thing for sure. So what made you what made you get into that? Like even caring about your credit? Like was there a situation that happened where you like I gotta get better credit or? Um, no, it wasn't you no know, situation. It was just like my wife like we gotta get this house. Like I need to pull your credit. <laughs> I'm like, what that mean? You know, like, we gotta get you together. It just got me together for real on the credit side. So and you got your merch. Mm -hmm. You're going crazy. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Um, Grizzly Gang? Yeah, yeah. So the merch thing, I ain't never really like, I don't want to, I, I want it to be like special. And I want everybody to be able to have it. I want people that's really going to like cherish it and care about it. So I only even market it in certain places. You feel me? Limited, so, limited drops. Yeah, limited drops, limited colors. Like if I, I be wanting to drop this color. If I drop this color, it'll never come out again. And if I see you at the show with it, then I'm a, okay, you got the exclusive. I know you, you got it. Yeah, type stuff. Yeah, it's interesting because even if you look at your socials, even on YouTube, there's no marketing campaign for it. So it's, it, it's something that the loyal community and loyal followers and fans, they just have to know about it. You got to know, yeah. If you know, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's, that's the marketing campaign. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the first day out is arguably like the greatest song when it comes to like, Prison mm -hmm. is one of the greatest prison songs ever, for sure. And anybody that has either went through it or, you know, everybody has gone through that situation and it's some from like their friends, their cousins going to court. And you kind of, if you're in some level of an environment, even if you didn't do it yourself, you're, you're familiar with the things that you're talking about. Prison reform is something that's real big right now. You know, um, what are your thoughts on prison reform and helping people get their life back on track when they are released from the penitentiary or even programs in the penitentiary that could actually be beneficial for people? It's so hard because once you're actually in there behind the walls, you realize like, it's, it's not, they not, there's nothing happening to rehabilitate people. Hmm. There's nothing happening to get people back ready for society again. It's people who don't even want to go home because they've been locked up for so long and it's like, what am I gonna do when I get out there? Yeah. You know, like I've been in there with people who like, I came here just to get some food and have a bed to sleep in. Mm. There ain't nothing for me out there. So I feel like they just gotta do better as far as getting people ready to come back out here into the world among society. You know, you do got them certain people who take the proper steps while they in there and have good outside resources and got their head on straight to use that as a time to just get polished, read, study up on some stuff and come up with a plan what they gonna do when they get out, you know? But other people just in there doing their time and just waiting they, when they get out. Once they get out, it's like, all right, bet, what you gonna do now? This is in the first day out the perfect title. While you're in there, are you strategizing? Are you putting a plan together while you're in there? Like, this is how I'm going to attack it as soon as I hit the streets. Because I, I mean, when we heard that line, like, being broke did something to my spirit. I like, felt that, mm -hmm. right? From, especially when we come from, it's like, all right, well, now we got to do something. We got to put something in action to make sure we never feel like this again. Yeah. How were you strategically planning while you was there to, for that first day out? Man, because I'm like, I, I, I always knew the type of lifestyle I wanted to live, like, I ain't want to be in the hood no more. 
you know, I wanted to like experience life and travel and see the world. I knew I wanted to do that. But I'm like, I'm gonna get there one way or the other. But before I try the other, I'm gonna give myself a chance. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm gonna give myself a chance and what I truly always wanted to do, you know? And when I just believed in myself and prayed hard for it and truly gave it a real shot, it worked. All so run. so All how, run how was it show. for you to, you make that record and you go from 3,500 followers to becoming a superstar mm -hmm. in a relatively short period of time. What are the, some of the things that you had to adjust to from being a regular person to now being somebody that everybody knows? Like how was that transition for you? It was so crazy because when it first happened, I wasn't even in that headspace. Like, I ain't, I just blew up. I was literally like, man, I'm happy to be out. You know, because a the, the couple of cases that I was fighting, I wasn't even supposed to beat or be out that soon. You know, Did they what, offer you 30 years and not a day lower? 30 of them. 30 of them. Tell them how loud you I sold. couldn't believe it. I'm like, why would you offer me that? <laughs> <laughs> That's disrespectful. You gonna sit here and offer me 30 years? Like I'm about to say, Abby, when you sober. You feel me? Like I'm about to be like, all right, come on, give me 30. No, I'll damn, take nah. it. <laughs> you gotta give me that at trial. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Abby, when you sober. You feel me? That is a hard line. Man. But no, I was just I was just happy to be free and just so blessed to be free. Like the fact I could walk to the gas station meant more than people noticing me when I go to the mall, you yeah. feel me? Even though that felt good too though. I, I, I remember when I first went to the mall, like after it dropped, like a couple weeks after it dropped, I instantly got a call from people like, I just walked to the mall, they knew who I was, like they wanted pictures. <laughs> I was excited about that So you, you were still in the neighborhood? Nah. You, you was out? Yeah, okay. because fame or not, you know, or successful or not, I still know the rules. You know, I'm still not about to be just Walk in the neighborhood like it's sweet. You know. Talk about the growth <clears throat> from that moment in time to what you're about to bestow upon T's Coney Island. Mm -hmm. Talk about the growth as an artist and the growth as inside of the music from yeah. some of the experiences that you had over that time. Yeah, so the growth as an artist, like the first thing, I really stopped letting people have too much creative control over where I, where I go with my music because when I was writing songs like that, in the beginning, like my first project, I wasn't never trying to be lyrical or trying to be like, have a bunch of metaphors and punches. I really was just trying to be as real as possible, vulnerable as possible, transparent as possible, what was going on in my life. My objective was to give people the chills, you know, because everybody lived life, real life, mm -hmm. good, the bad, whatever. So I wanted to give people my experiences because I know you either went through it or know somebody that went through it. So you gonna feel it in your soul. So I just had to get back to a point where it's like, you know how people are, oh, you should make something like this, you should make something like that. Or you should get away from that type of stuff or these sound the same. I just had to stop letting those seeds be planted in my head and just stick to what I do because if they knew what to do, then they would be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody tell you how to do it, they never did it. You feel me? <laughs> talk, talk about the title though, Coney Island, because where we from, Coney Island, is prestigious. Yeah. It's Brooklyn, yeah. home of staff, yeah. home of Lance. Coney Island is a different meaning in the city of Detroit. Talk about that. So Coney Island in Detroit, that's like, that's like a, that's like a lifesaver. You feel me, when you coming up, and you ain't really got it like that. Ain't no groceries in the house. You scrape up on $10 or something like that, you going to the Coney, for sure. <laughs> the Coney. You definitely going to Coney Island. Everybody in in Detroit can relate to like, if you come up in poverty, like you scrape up on a couple dollars and you start and you going to the Coney. So it's essentially a store where you can buy any type of, like a lot of different type of food. It's like a, it's like a bodega almost of sorts. Yeah, but everybody only get the same thing though. What you get? Cause they got a big menu, but you're not supposed to get just anything off the menu though. You <laughs> what, feel what, me? What do, you, what do you get? So you you can get a coney dog. That's it. But people made eating coney. Glizzy. Yeah, glizzy. but but see, people made that. People sexualized. <laughs> people sexualized it, so now we can't even get conies no more. You feel me? But you get like chili fries. You get a chicken pita. <laughs> You get a burger, some wings, and I feel like them are the essential <laughs> items. Yeah. Sexualized. <laughs> essential foods. 
Yeah. So you, you're not eating the glizzies no more? No. Nah. <laughs> People been sexualized are too crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a fact. No glizzy. That is a fact. How you feel about the state of Detroit right now as far as on the music scene? We've seen a lot of 42 Doug, Icewear, Vezo. It's, it's uh, a lot of guys that have been come up um, over the last like five years. And like I said, you you was actually early on that. Mm-hmm. Help pioneer that. that it's a new wave. Mm-hmm. How you feel about the, the music scene in Detroit right now? I feel I feel happy about it, you know, because some of these guys really been grinding for 10, 15 years, mm. you know, and they just not popping off. People just not hearing about them, mm. but they really been doing it for like 15 years and really trying, you know, the fact that they were still doing it before they even got to the point where they had not say a lot about their perseverance. So I'm just happy they finally getting the success that they worked for, for sure. Mm. Is there anybody, I know you got the Chris Brown record, which is mm. hard. Is there somebody out there that you had on the pen list? Like this is, I would love at some point to collaborate with them. You got a p- couple of people like that? Nah, I just, I, I, I love when things just happen genuinely. You know, like a lot of artists that, um, that I worked with recently, it's it just been genuine. Right. We connect on something that wasn't even about music, and you know, first, and then we got to talking about music. But I just like for it to be genuine connections. The music sound better, you know. The process of getting it out is smoother. Mm-hmm. You feel me? It's just it's just better when it's just genuine vibe and mind. What would, what would be your advice from your experience to people that's in the street now? trying to transition, trying to figure out, they want to do something different with their life, but they don't necessarily have it all figured out. They don't know which way to go about it. Like, what, what advice would you give somebody in, the, in those shoes? So to people to people that's still in the streets right now, I would say just make the transition and be quick about it because that that, that justice system is a real thing, super real. And and once you get in there, it's kind of like, depending on what you get in there for, it's kind of like impossible to get out. It's so easy to go in. It's so hard to get out. I think that the, 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 the thing that I really like about the first, that song was that it really spoke on the stress that you go through being incarcerated. A lot of times people glamorize situations, but like you really put it very eloquent as far as like, going through that process, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, talk about that. Cause I don't think people, that's not talked about enough. Like, yeah. it's, it's like you facing 30 years, it's not easy to even like, I'm assuming sleep at night or keep food on your stomach. Mm-mm. Because it's like, first of all, you gonna need people when you're in there. Mm-hmm. You are gonna need people financially, emotionally and mentally, you are gonna need people and they just not going to be there. They not going to be there. They might come around every blue moon and look out for you, but they not going to be there. Nobody going to be there how you need them to be there. Like people who I was hanging with every day before I went in, years passed without me talking to them. I forgot how their voices sounded. You know, family members like who, I just knew if something happened to me, they was going to come through. I ain't hear from them until I got out. And they was like, and blew up, and they was like, come over. Come over for what? <laughs> we got nothing to talk about, you know? Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> and it's like, every you got to buy everything in there. They don't give you nothing. You got to buy soap. You got to buy deodorant. Let's just, just talk about, the, we ain't going to get the food. Soap and deodorant, you got to buy that, or you won't have it. So you depending on these people, they not coming through. Now, you ain't got no soap or deodorant for five months, right? And the dude, like, man, listen, I ain't trying to keep smelling you, bro. So what you gonna do? You feel me? Yeah. He's 6'8". <laughs> what you gonna do? And everybody looking. If you don't do something, then you a target. Now you sweet. If you get anything through here, they taking it. And yeah, that's another thing. You could work to, to get it, then somebody take it from you. Yeah. Yeah, ain't no, ain't no chilling or none of that in there. It's like... You got to be on edge at all times, and you need people. That's the main thing, though. You need the people out here. I mean, you even out here, you see how unreliable people is. 
fact. <laughs> that's a fact. You feel that's me? Okay. How many times you tell people to do something simple and they can't even do that right? So imagine something as difficult as download this app, sign into it, connect your card, and then put $20 on here and then send this person $100. Yeah. You feel me? That's a fact. It just, it just ain't happening. You're always going to need people. Um, and they could be assets. And so the title of the show is Assets or Liabilities. And so I wonder, at this point in your life, what, what, is, what is your greatest asset? My greatest asset is just always going to be God for me, man. That's always going to be my greatest asset. You know, I feel like everything that happened, it ain't had nothing to do with me, nothing to what I did. Because somebody could take my same exact steps and it won't happen, mm -hmm. like how it happened for me. I've seen people take my exact steps with the game and then the music, and it didn't happen for them. So my greatest asset is God. So before we wrap, I want to ask you a question. You got married recently, right? Yeah, I got married recently. So Congrats, how? Man. Thank you, bro. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, we should do that all the way. Ring power. Yeah. <laughs> how has that uh, changed your life as far as you know being a, a family man and having to be accountable, mm -hmm. um, being a husband? How's how's that different for you? Yeah, um, I feel like marriage it it it, it's, it help you get old. You know, it's how you get old, especially for me, and where I come from, because I got somebody to. All right, where you at? All right, it's time to we gotta go. It's time to go. It's time to go home, or just keeping you out of little situations that could take you off the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot of people who would be alive if they was married or had a relationship. They'd still be alive right now. That's why I be telling them. You feel me? <laughs> I be listening to me. So it keeps you accountable. <laughs> it keeps you accountable. It keeps you out of trouble for real. And it just keeps you on your feet. You got to be sharp if you're married. If you're married, you got to be sharp. You got to be smart. <laughs> you can't just be <laughs> reckless. You can't be reckless when you're married. You got to go on a marriage tour. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Get your credit score fixed. Yeah. <laughs> get you a nice house. Yeah, get polished. Open mentally. some accounts. Get some mm -hmm. brokerage account. We're going to do it, man. No, nah, facts. The T and T Grizzly show. Yeah, facts. So, let's so, do it. So it's a, it's, a, it's a blessing to have somebody that can hold you accountable. Yeah, it's a, and that, that's the biggest. It, it's a lot of benefits and a lot of things I love about it, but that's the main thing for me, you know? Because that's the thing, and that's, that's the difference between life and death. Well, I think it's important for you to share that message because, once again, in hip-hop, a lot of times, we don't always see the full... We just hear people rap for two or three minutes at a time, but we don't get to see their life. We don't hear that testimony. That's important. Mm -hmm. What you just said might encourage somebody to get married. Mm -hmm. It might encourage somebody to start a family. Like, you know what I mean? Like, hearing those messages are important. What you talked about, prison, that's important. Mm -hmm. That might discourage somebody from committing a crime. Mm -hmm. Knowing, like, yeah, damn, I'm, I'm not really trying to go through all of that. Like, you know, you don't really see that. So I think hearing it in its full totality is important as opposed to just bits and pieces of, like, glamification that we just see on Instagram. No, nah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, man, we, we appreciate you. So I told you the first line that always stuck with us is definitely, you know, um, not a day low was one of them, but being broke did something to my spirit. Mm -hmm. That sat with my soul. But the other thing that always sticks in my head and it resonates with us every time is when we go to get a, a new watch. When mm -hmm. we hit this Rolly store with the Rolly on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we all out on Rolly's in yeah. honor of that line. Yeah. Are, <laughs> are, you, are you into watch collection Check or is it just I like what's nice? Man, I just I just like what's nice. Because I tried to get into watch collection. And, and the, that world goes so deep. Oh, you got to know somebody to know somebody. Yeah. It's like hustling, like worse. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> the, world the goes plug, so gotta deep. I got to introduce you to the plug. You got to wait six months. Facts. You got to buy a bogus watch so you can build up your credit to your get profile. a good watch. Facts. You got to build you over months, too. Yeah. Facts. You can't buy every month. You got to wait yeah. four months to yeah. buy. And it's like you going there, like, I don't like that. You can't even buy that yet. <laughs> That's the first thing. Let's check your profile. You feel I, you me? spent $100,000 on this yet. Exactly. And I'm thinking it's, okay, Rolly, AP, Patek, but it's other stuff out there. The Baccarons and the... Yeah. Stuff oh. I can't even pronounce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Baccarons it's like, that world go deep. That's a fact. You That's know? A fact. That world go deep. Like, it's this dude that got a $50,000 watch, right? He said people offer me millions for it. It's new, it's 50,000, and people offer them millions for it. I'm like, why? Nobody can get it. Scarcity. Nobody can get this. You go to any store, you go anywhere in the world, nobody can get this. 
and it's handmade by the wool. I'm like, that's different. That's crazy. I think a lot of that, that they, they be dragging it though. No, it's, like he had paperwork. No, no, that is official. But I'm just saying, like, even I was talking to Pusha T, like, start making more watches. Oh, no, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I'm saying? yeah, like, yeah, 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 like, come on, yeah, like, if you got the money, like, stop, like, yeah, they dragging this thing of, oh, it's gonna take 18 months to get, and AP's even worse. Mm -hmm. AP, the watches, don't, not even that expensive, they're like 30,000 relatively. I know that that's still a lot of money. I don't want people to, that's it's, going crazy. it's an ass. <laughs> I'm just saying, they acting like that's like a half a million yeah. dollar watch. They're like, oh, yeah. it's gonna take 18 months before you get considered, and you have to have a, a recommendation and a referral. I'm like, bro, I just want the watch, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the pandemic, the pandemic helped them. Yeah, because like, supply oh, chain. Supply chain issues. But I, like I said, now it's like the, the pandemic. Watch went, watches went up crazy yeah. around that time. Right. Yeah. Well, my brother, it's been a pleasure, man. No, nah, definitely. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, money and much much continued success, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. I truly appreciate this conversation too, man. Oh, love, love, man. man. Thank you all for having. We got to have it. Love. Uh, for sure. My dog. I wore my card yeah, just for you too. Yeah, yeah. I, feel, <laughs> I thought you were from the D when I first saw you. <laughs>